Welcome to the Developer Spotlight on the Full Dive Gaming Podcast. On the Developer Spotlight, we sit down with VR industry professionals. I've got Paul, the CEO of Pixel Games, and Leo, the head of global operations. What a title. Thanks for coming on, guys. Well, thank you for having us, man. Thank you for having us. Well, I gotta say a thank you to you guys because you are the reason we're here. We're at GDC right now, so this podcast is not gonna sound quite as good as normal because we're in a whole crowded stadium. We tried to find a quiet corner, but Pixelity actually sent us out here to hang out with them, check out their new games and what they've got coming up. While we're saying thank you, I gotta thank our sponsor, Asterian Products. If you don't know them, check them out on Amazon. You can use code FULLDIVE10 to get another 10% off their VR headset stands, mats, and other accessories. For our listeners who haven't heard of Pixelity, would you give me a little history? Like, when did you start? What did you start with? Right, uh, we started on 2017, April. And the name wasn't Pixelity back then. Okay. Uh, the name of the company was Pixel Films. <laughs> and yeah, I like that. Yeah. I have no regrets or whatsoever. No regrets. But you know, it's just it took just you know so many years, like three years to realize that that doesn't work. Yeah. Okay, so and we got it together with both members and changed to Pixelity. And our first game when we were like a Pixel Films back then and our first game was Rise of the Fallen, a game that proves that you know multiplayer in VR without wire is working. So well, we took a year to develop and release on various platforms, including Daydream by Google. We oh, had yeah. Oculus, Oculus Go and Samsung Gear VR. Uh, we had Pico. People can download the game and play from anywhere, any country, any devices. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So that's how we started. And even though we didn't make the commercial hit, because back then Oculus Go or 3 of devices, they don't really have much of you know sales force, right? So, yeah. But we eventually able to earn our position as a you know multiplayer VR developer because of the rise of the fallen, and we starting to collaborating together with like SK Telecom, which is leading carrier in Korea, and they needed us to you know promote their 5G network worldwide, and we were part of it. And so we saw rise of the fallen, and we started making crazy world VR together with SKT. And that game is based on Nexon IP, Nexon Korea, which is quite popular around the world and based on Nexon Cartrider. Nice. And how long have you been at Pixality? I think you're about two years and a half. Actually, uh, executives and I have known each other for a long time. And then, you know, I, I was in an online gaming business. Uh, but then after that, they persuaded me to join to do all the things <laughs> that I can't do. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, so I was invited and I came here to join. And now we are here to make VR games. And I think it's really good. It was a good chance to get this company and we are going global now. So it's going to be really fun. Yeah, it's awesome. So you did Rise of the Fallen back in the day. You dropped Crazy World more recently. Yeah. So for listeners out there who want to find a game, what all of your games are out and available right now? Rise of the Fallen is not available anymore yeah. because there is no 3 of <laughs> devices out there right now. And Crazy World is on Meta Quest. And you can find it on M Lab because we launched together with SKT in Korea first. We had to make it the game out on the platform first before we hit the map. Yeah, hit the store. So it's on M Lab. Potso just launched in China okay. by Pico yesterday. So we, it's hit, it's ranking up right now. So what is Potso? I haven't heard of that one yet. Uh, that one is you know it's hyper casual. One of the easiest thing you can do in VR and quickest. So we have like three different you know, lineups. And the first one is Tech Project, like Rise of the Fallen and the Patcher. These are more of multiplayer and competitive esports like genre. So we came out with you know more technical deriv derivatives so we can use it onto other genre. And this is where we were able to collaborate together with SK Telecom and Nexon to make multiplayer social media games. Yeah, and you mentioned in there the patcher, which yeah. is kind of your big game you're demoing here, but it's currently, it's only a demo that people can get on Steam right now, right? To explain our titles, uh, as he said, Rise of the Fallen was a of game, and Crazy World VR uh, is now released on, uh, on Pico and Steam, 
and also the yeah the the Meta AMOLED. Puzzle was just actually it has been released yesterday. It's on Pico and Steam and also Meta AMOLED. Wherever you are, you can enjoy Puzzle. You know anywhere in the world. And also Key House of Souls is in still in development and it will be released within this year. So please look forward to that. And that game is for someone who wants to be more like relaxing, healing, more narrative. They can enjoy that with the afterlife experience. So please look forward to that too. For so the patcher is still on Pico, but then we are planning to release on more platforms, including you know all the platforms you can name. Them. We're gonna go onto the, all those platforms. Everything? Yeah, everything. <laughs> to conquer the VR world. For listeners who haven't played the patcher, haven't heard the patcher, what is it like? What is the goal of the game? How do you play it? It features uh, PvP on Deathmatch, but we also offer boss raid, giant, gigantic boss raid, which is Tantalus, the gigantic monster in the stage, and you can actually play with team versus team, so PvPvE is possible. So you have to confront your enemy faction as well as the big giant monster. So it's gonna be really tricky and tactical. You have to choose which side you have to be or you have to fight both. So uh, every battle will be really tactical. So you have to look for the way to win you know, every moment. So it's gonna be really exciting. Also, you can farm in the battlefield. You can farm the monsters to improve your weapons and characters. So basically, it's not just one-time experience. You have to play over and over again to get the ultimate weapons and the character so it's gonna be really you know worth playing for a long time and also this patcher and the rise of the fallen that we mentioned before is under makina vendor trilogy the second part of the trilogy is the patcher and uh, we are preparing for the third one it's in the designing pro i mean pre-production phase uh, it's gonna be the ultimate the final stage of the trilogy so that's what uh, we can call the technology project because we put all the development skills and graphical uh, assets and everything. And we have all those uh, cute little titles and hyper-casual hyper titles and also sports social. So we can cover all the genres on VR platform. And we can even expand more, uh, not even for VR platforms, we can expand to like uh, AR, XR, whatever it is. So we have potentials on every way. That's why we can say for Pixelated Games now. Cool, <laughs> that's exciting. <laughs> uh, it's a big deal that you're here at GDC. You got a booth on the floor, it's like right next to Meta. But I think that one question that's come up from a couple people that I've talked to is it's like, wow, they're here, they have this huge presence, you have this huge staff, yet a lot of your games are still in development, they're not out yet. So how have you been so successful that you're doing all of this when you still haven't released a lot of games yet? It was successful, <laughs> right? Well, I wouldn't even use that word. Okay, okay. Right? <laughs> we survived. Survive. <laughs> How did we do it? We don't even have any game that made a hit. <laughs> How we did it? Yes. Right. Oh, you know, you get to understand if, if you read my prescription, you know. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of stress, a lot of blood, sweat, yeah. and tears. But we managed to survive because we still like you know stayed on their surface doing what we are best at and just try to prove that what we've done really matters in VR world and it was it's, it's just you know people understand right now that what we can do we can make their product or their IP is beneficial so somehow we keep on making the collaborative work and yeah that was enough for us to make us survive and Thanks to investors as well. <laughs> yeah, shout out to the investors. <laughs> Speaking of survival, uh, yeah, there's a lot to say. So when we started this company, there were a few hundreds of VR uh, developers. Only a few survived. It was lucky for us, but then we focused on many projects actually. So we are focusing on games, but also we are focusing on medical, digital healthcare project, or financial education, and many more on this VR platform 
we do lots of things and we do research and development. So we are now professionals in every way. But basically, we can say all of us, I mean, our all of staff are basically eager gamers. If you visit our YouTube channels and there are lots of videos, how much we love games. Basically, like for the patcher, we actually had an idea about the boss monster from a bosses in Monster Hunter series or like other RPG stuff and we all love games but on top of that for this uh, many VR projects we are open to work with as Paul said uh, the col collaborative projects yeah. whatever it happens in the virtual space for us everything is gaming so even though it's like digital helps client not the client partner come over and they want to make a digital and a health care based on their research and based on their you know like in a curriculum so we just we make it game out of their you know recipes so that's that's what we are good at so that's how we co collaborate with others so we don't really have any expertise on healing people's minds but my our partner has it and by using our tech together with you know our Part, our partners have, so we can make one great content in the year. Our partners are universities, doctors, and professors, and bio companies, and gamers. Yep. But then you, we are good at game, gamifying all those. So that's what we are doing. We can be a sample how game company can be in that kind of business. So it can be our futures for all game companies. I think it's a good thing to expand in every way. Well, it's really exciting. I've had a good time hanging out with you here and seeing all of this. For people who are looking forward to the future of Pixeldy, do you have an idea when the patcher is gonna launch? Are you, are you close on it? Uh... We'll give you an update. <laughs> I think that's the safest way to say it, right? Yeah, we'll yeah. give you an update. And so you can, yeah. But there is a playable demo right now yeah. on oh, yeah. Steam if you want to check it out. Yeah. So you can go out there. You got to play it on PC. It's not anywhere else yet. But you'll get a taste of what the game is going to bring. Was there anything else Pixel is working on you wanted to make sure we talked about today? I think we talked a lot. <laughs> longer than we thought. <laughs> so the patcher is in the final stage of development. We are trying to release it within this year. So please look forward to the patcher and it will be the ultimate VR experience for you guys. Stay tuned and subscribe to our social media channels and you can get the information anytime. Yeah, let us put more money into our games. <laughs> yes, then they'll get even better. Yeah. Well, we'll make sure there's links in the show notes under the podcast or in the description if you're here on the YouTube watching. And if you did listen to this podcast, we want to see us. We're actually here at GDC. You can see everybody here hanging out together in person, which is really cool for a podcast. But I want to say thank you for coming out and listening. And remember, if you've been thinking about VR for a while, dive on in.